Christmas carols are playing, the lights are going up, and it's beginning to look and sound a lot like Christmas. It's also a time when we caution persons with lifestyle illnesses such as hypertension, diabetes, and heart disease not to overindulge in the foods of the season. Your health is your responsibility, so please take care of yourself. Thank you so much for making it Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. We have a lot lined up just for you, so please stay with us. Jamaica, I can help you protect our citizens. Jamaica Eye will play a part in increasing your public safety. Jamaica Eye is part of an island-wide network of camera surveillance systems designed to increase the safety of you, our citizens. If you have a camera system outside your home or office facing a public space, log on to jamaicaeye.gov.jm today. Jamaica Eye, we're all connected. The Ministry of National Security, creating a safer and prosperous Jamaica. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, December 7, 2023. A joint select committee of parliament is to be established to review proposed amendments to the Domestic Violence Act. In an update to parliament on Tuesday, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sport, Olivia Grange, said the members would be named next week. She also indicated that drafting of the amendments was almost complete. Following a review by the Joint Select Committee, the bill will be tabled in Parliament. It will address the low-hanging fruits that came out of the Joint Select that were recommended. Um, and it also includes fine for breach of protection order. It includes how we will treat with perpetrator use of fire, firearm. The Domestic Violence Act aims to give greater protection to victims and deal effectively with perpetrators. Jamaica continues to increase its airlift for the winter season with the latest inaugural flight from Norse Atlantic Airways into the Sangster International Airport. The first flight arrived on December 1 with 188 passengers and crew traveling out of London in the United Kingdom. North Atlantic will operate four flights a week on Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays and Sundays. Chief Executive Officer of MBJ Airports Limited, Shane Monroe, says the UK flight is one of several new services for the airport. It's been quite a busy year actually, a new service out of the United States, new service out of Canada, new service out of the UK today, Norris flying out of Gatwick. Uh, we have one more to come before uh, Christmas and uh, we're excited. Norris Atlantic's commercial director, Bard Nordhagen, expressed his enthusiasm and prospects for the Jamaican market. So now we're going to do winter, we want to succeed, we want to learn, we want to understand how we can you know, expand from there and then uh, you know, grow the business together with the local tourism here as well. 27 farmers who are insured under the GK Weather Protection Scheme and suffered damage from the recent rainfall are to get a payout. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green made the disclosure during this week's sitting of the House of Representatives. The insurance scheme is intended to protect farmers from strong wind, rain and drought conditions and allows them to select the level of coverage they desire, which is matched with the premium they pay. The minister adds that there is no appraisal of damage and if the threshold is exceeded by a weather event, the farmers receive instant compensation. The total payout amounts to $675,000 and what it means for those farmers is that without any reference to the ministry, they will have resources to rebound from the most recent weather event. Minister Green is encouraging more farmers to enroll in the insurance scheme. He is also urging other insurance companies to join the mission to assist farmers in overcoming and recovering from agriculture-related issues. 26 community outreach workers in Westmoreland are now available to offer first aid support to individuals experiencing psychological distress. They are the second cohort to complete training in psychological first aid following 20 persons from Montego Bay. The initiative was implemented by the Citizen Security Secretariat of the Ministry of National Security. The aim is to equip community outreach workers with the tools to appropriately provide the initial response to persons in psychological distress. 
At the graduation on Monday, State Minister of National Security, Juliet Cuthbert Flynn, said the initiative was part of the government's ongoing targeted approach to crime fighting. The issues that we face daily are indeed very complex and demand solutions that go far beyond the ordinary. Your participation in this training embodies a commitment to activate problem-solving strategies that will create sustained impact for Jamaica land we love. The training is developed by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, and tailored to the Jamaican context by the European Union Technical Assistance Team. The graduates are strategically positioned across more than 20 communities in Westmoreland, namely Savannah Lamar, Cook Street, Seton Crescent, Harmony Town, Russia, and Delviland. The community outreach workers are also available in Newmarket Oval, Frome, George's Plain, Petersfield, Grange Hill and Farm Penn, as well as the communities within the zones of special operations, Zosos. And finally, students at St. Benedict's Primary School are the first to benefit from a three-part book series written to introduce youngsters to science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM career options. The Bang and Friends series is written by Lorna Green, who presented copies of the books to the institution's principal on December 4. Some of the titles include What is a Career for Ages 5 and 6? and Learn About a New STEM Career for 8-Year-Olds. Chief Education Transformation Officer Dr. Faith Alexander says it's in keeping with the government's goal of improving the learning environment by including STEM education into the curriculum. The Ministry of Education is going to totally transform how you learn, how the curriculum is written, and also to prepare you to be citizens of a global community. During the handing over ceremony, the Bang and Friends author also read excerpts from the books to the St. Benedict's primary students. The school's principal, Jacqueline Carter Dixon, welcomed the books, which she said would be a tool for the students to gain a different perspective as they learn about the various STEM jobs and opportunities. Children, you are the agents of change. You are the future. These books, written by Miss Lorna Green, will aim to broaden your scope of thinking, creating, doing, and exploring. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Do your part to prevent mosquito breeding. Mosquitoes will breed in any container that holds water. Tightly cover water storage containers such as drums, barrels, buckets and tanks. If this cannot be done, pour cooking oil on the water surface. Punch holes in all tins, plastics and beverage boxes to prevent the collection of water before disposal. Cover all tires or fill with dirt to prevent water collection. Scrub all vases once per week to remove mosquito eggs. Use mosquito repellents to protect yourself from mosquito bites. Dispose of garbage properly by placing in plastic bags and securing properly to prevent water collection. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. For the past 10 weeks, we have enlightened you on the operations and services of several agencies and departments within the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. As we bring you the final episode today, we'll give you all the highlights of Season 5. The government of Jamaica continues to invest in the country's human and economic resources. In this season, we highlighted some of the government's programs and projects geared towards improving Jamaican's quality of life. We spoke about the security features of the new banknotes, SLB's reintroduction of the granting aid program, the Big E program, scholarships, customer service, the first ever social IPO, the country's revenue protection, and what the government is doing to better prepare Jamaica for natural disasters. In case you missed all this, don't worry, we have the recap for you. 
Hi, I'm Shaquille Rochester Shorter, and welcome to the season finale of Finance Matters. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow the Ministry of Finance on Facebook, Instagram, X, LinkedIn, and no TikTok to see all the episodes and highlights. The new Polymer Bank notes are in circulation and the response from the public has been good. Based on the demand for the new notes, BOJ's issuance of notes is about 90%. Deputy Governor at BOJ, Natalie Hayes, says the bank notes are safe to spend. Here's what she told us about their security features. So we have features categorized according to um, the look, okay. the seal, and the tilt. So look, feel, feel and tilt, tilt, tilt and check. And check, check is the last one. Okay. I'll, I'll go to that. So let's look at the feel and that's what I mentioned earlier. If you feel the top, let me turn the note, um, the top right hand corner to the back of the note, there are some raised features there. Okay. Do you feel it? Yes. All right, so this, this feature is for the visually impaired yes. in particular. So on this note that I have here now, the 2000, I am feeling the raised dots here. Okay. The note that you have there, the 1000, what do you feel there? Feel at the back of the note, the raised I, features. Okay, I, I, it feels like a circle, I don't know. It's a circle? Well, then, then it's a circle there. Okay. Right, so the 5000, we have the square. So all of the six bank notes have a oh. different design at the back okay. and the visually impaired will be able not only to tell you if the note is authentic, yes. but also which denomination is it that you are that you have in your okay. hand. Okay, nice. Yes. So that is what we call the feel. So while we're on the topic of money, the Students Loan Bureau is gifting $60,000 to 4,200 tertiary students. Nikisha Walsh, Executive Director at the SLB, tells us how you can be eligible for this grant. Now, for you to become one of such recipients, you have to either be on a PATH program, okay. you have to be a ward of the state, or from a household whose income is below $1.5 million. What we have done is increase the number of beneficiaries from 3,000 to 4,200 students for this academic year. That's a massive, massive yes, increase, it is. Yes, it is. But why should you choose the SLB? SLB is here for persons to achieve their dreams, to assist persons achieving their dreams. Um, what I would say is that do not look at SLB as a loan, don't look at it as a liability because okay. we know that education is an investment. What SLB does is help you to invest in yourself and help you to have the ability to you know, pursue any dreams or career that you want to. So it is a stepping stool for you to move from where you are to what you can be. And that's how I want persons to look at SLB. And a reminder that when you repay your loan, it provides an opportunity for someone else to benefit from the SLB. If you don't want to apply for a student loan, the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service has scholarships available. Watch as Colette cummings McCausland, Director of the Talent and Knowledge Management Portfolio, tells us about the scholarships facilitated by the Ministry. We do have bilateral partners such as Serbia, Russia, China and Cuba as well as multilateral partners such as the OAS, Organization of American States, UK Commonwealth, New Zealand Commonwealth. Our local scholarship offers are the Marcus Garvey Pub Graduate Public Sector Scholarship, targeted to individuals within the public sector, as well as our new initiative, the Micro STEM Scholarship for teachers to be trained in the areas of STEM, as well as the UTEC STEM Scholarship for young professionals to be okay. trained in the area of STEM. You should not be worried about bonding because... All right, so bonding is it's of an achiarchic term. It's really just a service level agreement okay. promising that after you've studied, after the government has invested in you through our bilateral partners and you have studied overseas or locally, that you will just work in Jamaica for a minimum of two years to a maximum of five years. We are not done talking about money. The DBJ is granting millions through the Boosting Innovation Growth 
and entrepreneurship ecosystem Big E program. The, the Big E program is really a DBJ's program in supporting entrepreneurship in okay. Jamaica. Uh, it's really from a loan from the IDB and we recently got some additional money nice. from the European Union as a grant towards running the program. Okay. So the program is really about supporting innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, we recognize that businesses are at different stages. So you have people who are in the idea stage who just want to work through whether this idea makes sense. Yeah. You have people who already have a business and they're trying to find out how they can grow it or they can get into new markets, maybe offer new products. And they have some more established firms who really want to get much bigger. So sure. we've designed the Biggie program to support all these different businesses at the different stages of their life. Inventors and innovators can access grants through the Patent Grant Fund. Christopher Brown, Biggie's program manager, explains. Okay, so we recently launched uh, really the second cohort of our patent grant fund, okay. uh, which is really saying inventors who have new ideas or inventions are able to access grant money up to four million Jamaican dollars. Four million. Yes, towards <laughs> registering and protecting their okay. their inventions, which is filing a patent. Uh, so they, they they are able to use the money to do that locally as well as in other jurisdictions, countries in the world. So While the DOJ is empowering its people, it is also protecting the country's revenue. Cranston Morgan, the Commissioner of the Revenue Protection Department, explains the roles and functions of the RPD. The role and functions of the Revenue Protection Department are set out in Section 6 of the Revenue Administration Act. And there are three main things to lead investigations into fraud and corruption against the revenue to assist other departments, revenue departments, in doing these investigations and assist in implementing programs that will deter or detect fraud or corruption. Jamaica is better prepared for a natural disaster than it was in the past because of the National Natural Disaster Reserve Fund. Okay, so the National Natural Disaster Reserve Fund is actually an account to be established that will house resources to deal with losses associated with natural disasters okay. that will enable the government to respond quickly and effectively in the aftermath of, the, of, a, of a natural disaster. So Mr. Francis, when will this fund become accessible? Okay, so the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service, we're aiming to have the relevant amendment to the Financial Administration and Audit Act okay. um, submitted to Parliament by the end of December 2023. Um, at that time as well, we are aiming to have the financial regulations that will govern the um, transaction relating to the fund finalized and approved. So we expect that the fund should become operationalized sometime after the end of December 2023. But how quickly will the funds be mobilized in the event of a disaster? All right, so we know that it is important to be able to mobilize funds as quickly as possible after you have had a, a natural disaster event that was, would have resulted in significant losses. Yes. And so the fund is expected to, the monies from the fund are expected to be disbursed within a very short period of time. Now, the Reserve Fund, um, one of the proposals is that the fund should be accessed only if the natural disaster would have impacted the country okay. um, with damages exceeding 1.5% of GDP. And so what it will require is the fiscal commissioner to ascertain the impact of the disaster. And then once that has been concluded, the process to get the funds from the account will begin. And that process is expected to go pretty quickly. The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service is customer service focused. Rory Stennett, Director of Customer Service, tells us about the investment the government is making to ensure service excellence. There is a policy now instituted across government to improve service delivery. It's looking at measurement aspects, so how quickly do we turn things around to quality aspects. At the Ministry of Finance, we have over 60 services that we deliver okay. to our customers, whether citizens, businesses, other government agencies. So let's take pensions, for example. Okay. Improving service delivery there operates on different levels. One level is when you call, do you get someone to talk to? 
and we've invested significantly in that experience. When you email, does it just get lost? Or is it cataloged? Someone is assigned to it, someone manages it to completion. Do you have a set of standards that you're held to? All of that is a part of our investment at the Ministry of Finance, and that's just one service. Okay. We have services that citizens abroad require. So if you are gonna have a change of status and you're abroad, you need to have a specific letter that comes only from the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service. Okay. We have improved it now, where you have a lot more certainty. Before, it was a nebulous. You submitted something, you don't know what happened. Now we know where it is. Better tracking, better organization, so we can have a better, faster turnaround time. That's what it means when we say we're investing in that service experience. Jamaica's first social IPO, Project Star, allows you to be a part of and contribute to Jamaica's social transformation. Your investment, or in this case, donation, will help to fund Project Star, which is designed to create positive social change. We've spent a lot of time trying to explain to people, when you invest in this one, you're really making a contribution, you're making a donation. You're not going to get a financial return. Yes. All social stock exchange entities don't provide a financial return to anybody who would have contributed. But what it does, it provides that, that, that funding mechanism for, for, for a contribution of funds towards a social good. The Ministry of Finance and the Public Service is driven by service excellence. Thank you for joining us on Season 5 of Finance Matters. Remember, you can follow us on social media at MOF Jamaica and please visit our website at mof.gov.jm. Stay tuned for next season where we will continue to demystify the economic and fiscal policies and initiatives implemented by the government to empower Jamaicans as we chart a path to Jamaica's economic prosperity. Cake, sorrel, ham, and other favorites are the kinds of foods that will be consumed in high proportion during the festive season. But we are advising persons to think carefully before you do, especially if you are hypertensive, diabetic, or have any underlying illness. Here are some tips. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Anthros Campbell. During the joyful season, there's usually a high level of indulgence in food and drink, which can sometimes worsen some of the illnesses we have. But do you know that you can enjoy all the festivities of the season without too much impact on your health and your waistline? Today, we encourage you to watch what you eat and stay healthy. And to help us eat responsibly is registered dietitian within the Ministry of Health and Wellness and parish nutritionist for Clarendon, Debbie Otte Golding. Mrs. Otte Golding, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Tell us why is it so important mm -hmm. to watch what we eat, especially at this time? Well, our health is our greatest asset and it's because of this we want to do all that we can to take care of our bodies. And this will help for us to achieve and maintain quality of life. And so practicing healthy lifestyle habits will mm -hmm. help us prevent and manage the chronic non-communicable diseases like our diabetes or hypertension or heart disease, right? And so during the festive season, persons usually overindulge. Yes, yes. Yes, so they will usually eat a lot of food, pack on a lot of calories, and this definitely can lead to overweight, yeah. which increases the risk of the chronic non-communicable diseases like your diabetes, hypertension. So you're saying that these people, diabetics yeah. and yes. persons who are hypertensive, mm -hmm. those are the people who are most at risk? Definitely, right? And having poor, making poor lifestyle choices yes. will definitely worsen the condition for these persons. Right. Um, so what are some of these choices that you're talking about that are poor choices? Okay, so you have persons, 
um, they will not only overeat, but they will eat a lot of sugars, a lot of fats, a lot of sodium. And so this will definitely increase the risk of, you know, getting these diseases or yes, worsening yes. these diseases. Yes. Yeah. But people say, it's just Christmas Day and Boxing mm -hmm. Day. How can that impact anybody? I mean, I'm just overeating one day. What kind of impact that can have? Well, for persons who are living with chronic non-communicable diseases, you don't want to take no chance at all. So you want to ensure that you're moderate in what you do, you're responsible in what you do, because you don't want to be sick after the Christmas yes, the yes. season or the New Year's. You know, you want mm -hmm. to ensure that you are following your meal guide of how to mm -hmm. eat and that you make appropriate, responsible choices yes. so that you don't worsen your condition. Yes, yes. So mm. are you taught, you're focusing on just these people? Right. The other people don't have to watch what they eat? Oh, definitely. It's very important for us without the chronic, who, persons who are mm -hmm. living without the chronic non-communicable mm -hmm. diseases to be mindful of what they eat because you usually tend to want to overeat. And what happens when you overeat is that, again, you pack the calories yes. and then it leads to overweight or yes. obesity yes. and once you're obese definitely it's a sign it's a it's it's an it puts you at risk okay. for even getting the diabetes mm -hmm. and the hypertension and the heart disease okay tell us about some of the some of the issues that persons mm -hmm. with non-communicable diseases may face okay so if we are not practicing the healthy eating habits we are eating the sugars the sodium the fats it will definitely worsen the condition, so the blood pressure will be uncontrolled, the blood sugar will be uncontrolled, and this will damage the major, major organs in the body. Mm -hmm. So you'll find persons having complications like kidney disease, nerve problems, stroke, and even yeah. heart attacks. So it's very okay. important for these persons to really, really be mindful of how they eat. All right, what, what are some of the things that you would encourage? What are the do's for these people? But some definitely don't. Okay, so do's definitely you want to try and use more natural seasonings. We're talking about your onions, your garlic, your scallion and thyme, and limit the powdered seasonings that are usually packed with salt. You want to ensure that you trim the visible fats of meats, take off the skin, you know, use the leaner parts of the meat, right? And of course, you can, you know, try and choose methods of cooking that don't have a lot of fat. So you're steaming, you're stewing, you're roasting. You can, you know, choose those type of foods. And also, you want to ensure that you get some fruits and vegetables in. Your fruits and vegetables are packed with vitamins and minerals that will boost your immune system. You won't get sick easily, right? It also has a fiber. Of course, you know that will prevent constipation mm -hmm. and it also will help persons who want to maintain a healthy weight. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. We've come to the end of our show for today, but do join us again tomorrow and we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.